tutakuwa ni kuchagua na kuchambua huku wazazi. Schools in session today in Zanzibar. Zayana Ali Sayed never dreamed she would teach people about farming. Just a few years ago, she battled to earn a living from her own poultry farm. As a widow with seven children, she relied on her extended family to survive. Since I joined this group, I am no longer dependent on my family. Now, I completely depend on myself. So what changed? Well, three years ago, Sayana joined a farmer field school. And for the first time, she was taught how to farm. Before, I was getting about five or seven eggs from each hen, but now I get up to 25 eggs. Historically, Zanzibar Island off the coast of Tanzania was an important trade center, but the local population benefited little. Still today, the majority of the island's 1.3 million inhabitants are subsistence farmers and more than half live on less than a dollar a day. The government of Zanzibar, supported by the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, or IFAD, decided that knowledge was the key to change this. There was a great need for farmer field schools because the majority of our farmers, first of all, didn't go to school. They have very little knowledge locally obtained and the practices which have been on their farms is just uh, conventional. So there was a gap. And this gap was knowledge-based. And it's knowledge that's being shared at this farmer field school, one of 720 that have been set up in the past four years. The community in each district decides what its needs are, and the project team then draws up a suitable curriculum, bringing together a group of farmers who study through an entire farming season. Nearly 60% of the students are women. To tell you the truth, I never dreamed I could be such a successful farmer. And Tamasha has certainly been a success. With her bigger banana yield, she's become the main breadwinner and can now pay her children's school fees and support her husband's dairy farm. Education opens up the mind of the farmer. Before I started the training, I knew nothing about how to take care of a banana plant. But then I found out it was just like taking care of your child. Others have taken it a step further. Although some have not finished high school, a number of farmers are conducting their own research. I feel very pleased to get the chance to contribute my ideas and share my experiences with other researchers, to help the poor farmers from my country to earn a higher income and to reduce poverty. Meanwhile, the knowledge is spreading. When people see their neighbors' success, they form their own farmer field schools. More than 40 self-initiated schools have sprung up, and former students, like Zayana, are being trained to facilitate them. And those who apply what they learn are reaping the benefits. Bunches of bananas have tripled in weight. Rice production has gone up fivefold, and these bigger yields mean bigger profits. We will reach a stage whereby 70-80% of farmers are producing surplus food, and that's when we'll come out of poverty. And with 1,200 farmer field schools planned by the end of next year, this may just become a reality. For Hungry Planet, I'm Joanne Leverton. Nearly one year after the devastating floods in Pakistan, families are harvesting food again. In a race against time, FAO and its partners reached over 10 million people across the country within six months. Through these efforts, some one million animals were kept alive and healthy, and wheat planting was not delayed by a year. FAO provided wheat and vegetable seeds to nearly 480,000 flood-affected families. In January, Mohamed Zada had already planted his wheat and vegetable seeds, and his mother, Kambara, received animal feed and deworming pills for her few remaining animals. The cost of keeping one animal alive is less than one-tenth of its replacement value, and these animals are a crucial source of income, nutrition, and draft power and for many farmers their main asset. 
Now in June, the family is feeling more hopeful as they had a good wheat harvest, which will help feed them for the rest of the year and provide quality seeds for the next planting season. The training was important, as well as seeds and fertilizer. It gave us a better crop. Before we harvested 1,000 kilos of wheat. Now, after your assistance, the crop is 1,800 kilos. Farming families lost generations worth of hard-earned assets and savings. FAO implemented cash for work schemes across the country, clearing irrigation channels to ensure the planted crops would get enough water. Now we have work near our homes. We have rebuilt our water channels and we can feed our children. The average family requiring agricultural assistance owns or can access only five acres of partially irrigated cropland. High levels of malnutrition, food insecurity and debt are daily realities. In January, Bachai struggled to feed her seven children and she was expecting another baby. Here in Sindh, in many areas, it was impossible to plant the winter wheat crop as the flood water receded much more slowly. But in spring, this family received sunflower, rice and vegetable seeds. Misri Khan had to rush his wife Bachai to a clinic in the middle of the night as her labor pain started. Now Bachai has a new baby girl, Sajida, and she's cooking vegetables for the family dinner. With money earned from the sunflower harvest, we were able to pay for the baby's delivery, start rebuilding, and buy household needs. FAO and its partners have already helped over 900,000 families to produce food again. But it is vital that assistance continues over the next two years to build livelihoods, reserves and resilience against future shocks. For Hungry Planet, I'm Gillian Hazel. My name is Christina Aguilera. I'm a singer, songwriter, and WFP ambassador against hunger. Right now, in the Horn of Africa, a devastating drought, high food prices, and conflict are keeping millions on the razor-thin edge between hunger and starvation. The World Food Program is on the front line of this hunger crisis, providing nutritious food to the most vulnerable. With our help, they can save even more lives. The World Food Program, fighting hunger worldwide. These children have survived the days-long trek from drought and violence-plagued Somalia to arrive here in Dadaab, Kenya, the world's largest refugee camp. They are severely malnourished, and despite the treatment they are receiving at these hospitals, not all of them will survive. Many are so desperate, they are actually fleeing southern Somalia for the battle-torn capital of Mogadishu. These are new IDPs here in Mogadishu, and the children are very, very weak. They've been traveling for days in search of food. The plumpy nut here is, uh, can really help the supplemental puppy and the ready-to-use foods, but we have a severe shortage here in Mogadishu, and we're really going to start airlifting in now that we have the financial contributions from many places, uh, airlifting in the supplemental food to help these young children. Over 1,000 people arrive in northern Kenya every day. Families like these, with small children and what little they could carry. They've been traveling for days with almost nothing to eat or drink. The priority here is to state the bleeding obvious, is to get food here in the next few days. Um, these folk are very weak, they've been on the road. Money is step one, but then in areas like logistics, in areas like um, nutrition, fortification of food. There's much that private sector uh, can contribute. Whatever you can give, give. 
Do not ask why, but ask how. The basis is the infrastructure, and unfortunately, despite all our efforts over the last years, there has been some progress, but not enough in relation to what is needed. How do we bring water to this area? How can we bring roads to this area? How can we assist the farmers here to restock the animals? The key point is to build food security for the future. There are more than 11 million people in the Horn of Africa in desperate need of food assistance. New arrivals to the camp are given a ration of fortified cereals, beans, oil, salt, and sugar, while the children receive foods tailored to their nutritional needs. It's a simple meal, but it saves lives.